Good morning, folks. As we watch a developing stealth CME break off the southwestern limb away from Earth, the SDO lunar eclipse season's top interference shots from the moon are at hand. Orbit always has this double moon sphere cross at this time of year. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star, silent, except for the CME bottom right and, of course, those moon eclipses. Sunspot group at the coronal hole has diminished. Plasma filaments seem angry, but that description is constrained to the limbs where the large ropes are wriggling about. In terms of relevant space weather for Earth, it's all about the coronal holes and solar wind. The stream from this large coronal hole is due at Earth in about 36 hours, and the magnetic connection to it has kept the earthquake alert high. Two big rumbles the last day, Solomon Islands and then just north of New Zealand. That bigger one originally came in at 7.0. Also got a volcano on alert in Alaska. They are preparing for an eruption as the mountain goes on orange alert. Let's go to the weather where it may be hard to focus away from the large front, but if you do get your eyes to New Mexico, Earth thought it'd be fun to send lightning my way the day after we posted our seasonal lightning highlights video. Strong step leaders leading into ground strike backs, the second of which sustained very nicely after the initial contact, but a different pathway upward. Let's go next to Florence. Models are beginning to agree. The system is going to hit the Carolinas and then get stuck as a weaker low creeps in behind it. While storm surge and high wind are always a hurricane concern, the longer term watches for the rain is five days later, it is still going to be coming down there. Toggling back and forth between the GFS and Euro model, Hawaii landfalls here. Good deal of uncertainty, apart from the need for locals to pay attention. Last on the cyclonic front, Guam just got hit, and the Philippines, Taiwan, and China are up next after its run through the Philippine Sea. Since yesterday, we showed a solar flare effect on global electric circuit paper. Here is the latest on geomagnetic storm effects on the circuit. This online release won't hit print journals for two months. Scientists are making the case for trans-Neptunian object 2015 BP519 being an outlier among Kuiper Belt objects. While its close approach isn't all that strange, the tilt and eccentricity of the orbit give pause, as they cannot even be sure this isn't a one-time visitor. No telemetry on a possible entry or exit. Up next, we're looking at supernova, and specifically here, the great 1987A event and its expanding shockwave. They say that compared to previous looks, the shockwave is now accelerating, moving faster, and is doing so as it exits the ring of material and enters interstellar space. It might make sense to ask if this mechanism could be applied to solar wind acceleration as it leaves the corona. Lastly, on the article front, we've got three Harvard professors, including Abraham Loeb, offering a different explanation than inflationary expansion in the early universe. EU fans, take notice. Just about everything is set for observing the frontier 2019. All the speakers are confirmed as well as the dates and general timeline of each day. Orange are the VIP events, and the other colors are mostly just for my purposes. We've got three days of presentations and fun events, in light of grand solar minimum potential this century, and with Earth's weakening magnetic field, there is a bit of a focus on solar forcing and electromagnetism of Earth. Joan Burkepile will be doing a presentation on interplanetary magnetic fields, magnetic portals connecting Earth to Sun. Eugene Bagashoff will be taking his last two electromagnetic presentations to the next level and tying them together. A few of the core focus points of our new book will be detailed, including the sun's place in the mainstream and electric forcing of geophysics. And one of the people cited many times in our new book, both as a lead author and co-author, is Dr. Brian Tinsley. His work on solar forcing has spanned years, and he is one of the living legends that has laid the foundation for those who truly understand solar forcing today. He'll be doing one of the more constant effects, the solar wind pressure and electric effects down the vertical column through the global electric circuit in a way that intimately involves microphysical cloud processes. This is one of the key items in our cosmic ray maximum state and worsening future, and Dr. Tensley makes his conference debut. Tickets are $129, and it includes all three days, four community presentations on Friday, 11 main presentations Saturday and Sunday, along with breakfast both days of the weekend, and the social networking hours at night, where many of you say you've had some of the best discussions of your lives. Hope to see you out there. Tickets at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.